why squishing is good. We're going to start by discussing some of the basic reasons to squish, and then we'll counter some fundamental arguments in opposition to squishing. And finally, we'll finish up by comparing some alternative methods of spider use and use Reasons to squish. Spiders are creepy. Scientists don't even dispute the fact that spiders are creepy. They're also scary, which is why movies like Indiana Jones and countless horror movies have that gratuitous spider scene in them, and why movies like Arachnophobia are so popular. Shut that down. Thank you. <laughs> spiders also spin webs. Webs are creepy and scary. Have you ever been walking down a trail in the forest or in your garden and next thing you know you're just covered in webs and they're in your face and in your mouth? Ew! Or what about in your backyard when you go to pick up that brick that's laying there and it goes, you know that sound? It's even grosser when you're in your house picking up a shoe that does that. <laughs> webs are another good reason to squish spiders. <laughs> Some spiders, actually almost all spiders, are poisonous. Did you know there's only one variety of spiders that is not poisonous? The rest are toxic. The black widow spider's venom is 15 times more powerful than the venom of a rattlesnake. Little fact for you. There's some other interesting facts. In 1994, a statistical survey on spider bites was done by the Center for Disease Control and Epidemiology and the Oregon Health and Human Resources Department using research that was compiled by Poison Control Centers, the American Association of Poison Control Centers. They discovered that even though the population of the United States, it, only 4% of the population of the United States, I should say, lives in the Pacific Northwest, but more than 10% of all reported spider bites happen right here. Another neat little statistic on the back of that. In my book, that's more good reason to squish. <laughs> Fifty species of spiders are known to bite people. Among those are black widows, brown rhinoceros, and hobo spiders, which are very prevalent in this area and are very poisonous to people, toxic to people. Not all spiders have venoms that are toxic to people. Um, tarantulas. Some are, some aren't. There's also cobweb spiders or orb spiders, which is your basic garden spider. Wolf spiders, crab spiders, and jumping spiders are all known to bite people. Their venoms are not toxic to people, but every year in the United States, 50 people will die from allergic reactions to spider bites. They're allergic to the protein in the spit. So if the toxin doesn't get you, spider spit might. Now you mention bacteria. Just about everybody who's bitten by a spider runs the chance of getting a really nasty bacterial infection that can actually cause damage to the localized tissue that can get gangrenous. If you get gangrene, you might actually have to have a body part amputated from a spider bite. Or if it gets into your bloodstream, it can be so bad that you can be either very sick or it can't kill you just from a bacterial infection. We'll give him that. Spiders get into undesirable places. A few of my personal favorites. Oh, had one underneath the toilet seat. Luckily, I found it before I sat on him. I had one in bed with me just last summer, a nice little garden spider. That was pleasant. Had a nice allergic reaction. My favorite, though, which luckily I don't remember too well, was the one that was in a towel when I was about three years old and my mother was drying me off. Unfortunately, they think it was probably a hobo spider, although it might have been a browner poop. It's hard to say. So, luckily I don't remember much of that, but I am going to pass around some really lovely pictures of what happens to people that are bit by browner poop and hobo spiders. Which, in my opinion, is more... <laughs> To kill <laughs> 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 On behalf of the spider, though, we really need to look at some arguments in opposition to squishing. They eat bugs. That's true. Spiders do eat bugs. But so do birds and bats and reptiles and even other bugs like wasps and ants all eat bugs. So spiders don't claim sole responsibility for keeping insect populations under control. Let's see. I'm not advocating mass annihilation of spiders. You guys seem to understand that. I'm just saying it's okay to squish. A little selective squishing when you find yourself eye to eye to eye to eye to eye to eye with a spider is okay. And besides, with their reproductive capabilities, there really is no way that we're going to be able to annihilate them from the face of the earth. 
This little garden spider, or spider, will produce on average 800 offspring in their lifetime, which is one year. The average human in their lifetime will produce 2.2 offspring. <laughs> You're good with numbers. Do the math for me. If me and all of my descendants kill a spider a day, every day for our entire lives, are we ever going to wipe out the rest of descendants? How many descendants do you have? <laughs> At this point, none. But if I'm average, you have 2.2. No. 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 <laughs> Those are awfully big numbers. The, the answer to that is no. So, it's not going to hurt you to squish one or two. Another argument in opposition on squishing is there's God's creatures, which is true, they are God's creatures. So are exterminators. With the reproductive capabilities of spiders, I don't think that either one is likely to become extinct. I posed this question, since it is a moral question, I posed it to an old family friend who was a pastor of the church that I attended as a child. And after he stopped laughing, he told me that he squishes spiders. Let's look at some alternatives to squishing, such as chemical insecticides. I think that everybody knows that these are hazardous materials. They get into the soil where we grow our foods, and they get into water supplies. You can't really control where they go. They're definitely not safe to use in your house. If it's just one little spider that you want to kill, it's not a good alternative to switching. Vacuuming. One of my personal favorites, until I discovered that they're little escape artists, and they just usually find their way right back out. So now they have those bug backs so that you can suck them in from a distance and they have that one-way valve so they can't get out. Well, then what happens to this poor little thing? Over days or weeks, they starve to death. Look at this face! Do you want this poor little guy to starve to death? No, I'd rather squish him. <laughs> other alternative, catch and release, which I do with other bugs. <coughs> catch and suffocate, which Christina showed us in her little bug speech. Or catch and flush. All good alternatives except for one thing. They all involve catching. <laughs> this is a fun one that I found while doing research for this speech. This was an article that came out of a newspaper in January of this year where a convicted arsonist admitted that he set fire to a church while burning spiders. <laughs> Not a good alternative to squishing. Squishing is good. Today you've heard my reasons for squishing spiders, and I'm sure that if you give it a little bit of thought, you can probably think of plenty more of your own. And on behalf of the spider, we've also looked at a couple of arguments in opposition to squishing, as well as some alternatives to squishing, which are by and large not only more cruel to the spider, but also less effective and less safe than squishing. With that in mind, thinking about Little Miss Muffet, I'd like to ponder a little something. Can I have the speech from now? I'm a little forward and ready to do this with that. Do we have a Anyway, ponder this. <coughs> if you're sitting on your tuffet, 
beating curtain way. Use your running shoes for switching and you'll have a better day.